Hey everybody, welcome to another Good E-Reader comparison video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're going to check out the Apple iPad Mini versus the Kobo Arc. We're going to evaluate hardware, software, content distribution systems, comics, newspapers, and the entire reading experience. So let's look at some specs first. They're pretty similar. The Apple iPad Mini 7.9 inch screen. Resolution is 1024 by 768, while the Kobo Arc has a 7 inch screen with 1280 by 800. So it has a little bit higher resolution. You're looking at um, a dual core processor on the Apple iPad Mini. Kobo Arc actually has a dual core processor as well, except a little bit faster. It's a 1.5. RAM relatively the same and they actually have the exact same storage options for 16, 34, 32 and 64 gigs, a Wi-Fi and battery life is pretty similar. You're looking at about 10 hours on each device. Peter here is going to show you all of the hardware elements that make these unique. Something that really stands out is the front facing speakers on the Kobo uh, Arc. Finally front, space, front facing stereo speakers. You have um, a microphone, camera, and a light on the top of the Kobo Arc. Volume control up and down, 3.5 mil headphone jack. You have a power standby button and a status indicator light. Nothing's going on on the left side of the device and a micro USB port on the bottom. You can also pull this back to take off the backing to change colors to jazz up your Kobo Arc. You have front facing camera with the light sensor. You also have a uh, Apple button, much wider obviously because it's a 7.9 which is essentially an 8 inch. Uh, you have a, a slider lock button to stand by and uh, turn volume off and on kind of thing. You can set it to different things. Volume up, volume down, rear facing camera, standby button, power button, uh, 3.5 mil headphone jack, nothing going on on the right side and the new connector for the new generations of Apple products and stereo speakers on the thumbnail. Yeah, I mean, really, uh, the advantage the iPad mini has is that it's a little bit bigger and it also has both front and rear facing cameras. Well, the Arc only has a front facing camera. Uh, personally, I never take pictures with the rear facing camera yeah. on any of my devices except for maybe my phone. So these have a lot of similarities in terms of size of screen, both have speakers and a lot more. So next we'll look at the software experience. So we can see here that we have iOS and Android and this is iOS 6 versus um, ice cream sandwich. So two very, very distinctive uh, ecosystems uh, that we have available here. And you can see fundamentally different. Uh, one thing that Kobo does unlike any other tablet, is having a feature called Tapestries. You can see what Peter's doing here. There's a lot of cool elements uh, you know, to this. It gives you your reading life stats. Um, it shows you things that you're in the process of, of reading, uh, recommendations. You can also establish like your taste profiles, which helps Kobo sort of customize discovery based on your reading habits. So you could say, you know, I love The Mockingjay and it'll start presenting uh, books to you both by the same author but by other authors with the same type of genre. So you can see I've said yes to a certain number of books and no to a lot of books as well. And um, if you look at the main library, this is sort of how it's presented. Whereas with Apple, it's dependent on what type of system that you have. iBooks is pretty well the default, so this is like what you're gonna see here. Uh, let's uh, open up a book and see how the reading experience looks. So this is my current favorite book right now. I'm just gonna go to chapter one here, if we can make our way over to it. So you see here, it's the same book displayed um, by default on both of these devices. And let's do see what we have with our text that we can change. We have font styles, uh, font types. So you have uh, three settings, whereas <laughs> Apple has about nine or so. Font size, uh, everything changes live. You also have themes, so you can do night, sepia, sepia, and uh, classic. 
One of the things Apple iBooks has is a continuing scroll function. So in essence, you've changed uh, a book running side by side to a uh, entirely fully rendered book that will just endlessly scroll till you hit the end of it. So that's kind of a neat feature. Animated page turns, which is cool. Just kind of next page on the Kobo arc. Yeah, so I mean, pretty well um, in terms of changing fonts, long spacing margins, they both do it. Uh, what about, um, you know, unique features on the arc? We have book stats here. So it'll tell you uh, times the book is read, getting low on battery, that's okay. Battery life is actually really good on the arc, so even if it is a 15%, you will read for hours. Um, likes, dislikes, tells you what uh, is going on, nine people reading it now. You can add comments, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, it's, it's almost like a cool way to form virtual book clubs, and that's obviously something that is a distinctively Kobo. Of course, both of them have easy ways that you could, like, augment text. So... You can hold down on a particular word, you same, can define it. Same thing on the uh, Kobo, if you press and hold on a word, it turns into a highlight, you can change the color of highlights, it instantly has a definition there. <coughs> you still, you get, uh, oh you get one more color of highlight on the iPad mini, oh uh, that's yeah. it, the review is over. Yeah, no, iPad but, wins. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, you can make uh, notes, so you can add a note. Type your note here. It's not pulling up the keyboard for some reason. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so while we're here, let's just look at how the keyboards are different. Uh, kind of a classic Android look to the keyboard. Nothing to write home about. Um, other Android devices like the Nook HD, Kindle Fire, they kind of jazz up their... Uh, um, the keyboard's a little bit better, but this is just kind of a stock. I think look. I like the keyboard how it's shorter. Yeah, it's like, yeah. This is like it's it's, like it's taking up way too much space, but yeah. at the same time, this is almost an inch bigger screen. Yeah, they kind of market it as a seven inch, but it is a seven point nine, which is essentially almost an eight inch. So, so we've made a note there, and uh, you can also do things like post to Facebook so it instantly gets the what you were highlighting and uh, you can post your wall tell people hey look at this check this part of the book out and we also have search uh, I mean definition um, Wikipedia and Google as well so uh, if you do need to find out some more info on Wikipedia what the particular Search is about, there you go. Yeah, I mean, they, they both have redeeming features. I think I like the Kobo Arc presentation of, um, you know, being able to change things on the fly. Kobo Pulse as well as Reading Life, which is also very cool. It's a way that you could sort of like earn rewards, achievements, and things like that. I would say Kobo has uh, a, a more wider variety of books in its portfolio than Apple does. So let's look at the Kobo store to give people a sense on how the book distribution system looks. Fairly similar in terms of like uh, you have scrolling panoramic views. Yeah, you can scroll everything left to right as well. I think the thing that really sells me on the Apple store is this whole header here. It's got the cool featured um, particular books and all that. It's got little icons at the top to, you know, better hone in on what you're reading. Fiction, yeah, romance. say like it's Thanksgiving. You yeah. know, you may, might want to you might want to promote books that are more towards like eating and cooking. Yeah. Uh, or uh, you I know, do like on the, the road to Christmas, it may have like you know top Christmas books or you know best sellers of the holidays. Whereas you're not going to really see that with Kobo because they don't really have like a featured type. of Yeah, header. you got to dive in a little deeper to get any sort of uh, like new and hot Canadian nonfiction all the way at the bottom. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Kobo has like three, po three and a half million books, whereas Apple barely even has close to a million. Um, and Kobo prices on the whole are much more respectable than Apple. Right. So, of course, they have a little bit a more of a unified way to search. So you can look at like top charts, 
top authors. Very easy to click on things like this, whereas you don't really see that with Kobo. You have to sort of like dive a little bit like deeper into it. I, I didn't mention reading life, so I kind of wanted just to show that to you really quick. Statistics on your reading habits. Awards, achievements, all that kind of stuff to kind of encourage you to read. It'll say, you know, you've done this many chapters, you've started reading a new book, all that kind of stuff. Now, you will see that sort of stuff with the Kobo app for the iPad. So it's not something that's distinctive to the Kobo arc, but it's firmly integrated in a, in a much better way than, say, the autonomous app for the Kobo or the iPad. Uh, normally works. Uh, next thing I want to do is uh, look at newspapers. We have our own section here, the Goody Reader tapestry we've created. We have the same uh, newspaper on both of these. We're on a different page. We need to go to page one. So we'll bring this up. And we'll go to all the way to the beginning. There we are. All right. So you can see that both of these kind of give you a very unique experience. Sort of the same thing, pinching and zooming. Pinching and zooming exists on both. Double tap does a quick zoom. If you press and hold on the Kobo, you can go into smart flow mode. Uh, what this does is kind of like an article view. Uh, sends you into the article in more of a book. In, in kind of like it's, uh, you know, acts like more of a book than, uh, than looking at a newspaper. We're just turning up the uh, iPad here. Yeah, so it's I mean, this this has like it'll read the articles to you, which is cool. Hyper kicks off India visit. Canada optimistic that impasse on nuclear deal could come to an end. I don't know if I'd be able to listen to that for any time. No, of time. I don't want a robot voice reading thousands upon thousands of words <laughs> to me. Uh, I'd rather just read it myself, truthfully. Yeah, so this is what you can expect, very traditional uh, newspaper experience with press reader. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is look at comic books, and we're going to fire them up on the Marvel app. This is mainly an indication on how high res the comics are, look at the same comics side by side, how it looks. We recognize that comics purchased from iBooks may have some different features, but it comes down to how they look, not how pretty the page right. turn animation is. You can see for yourself here, it's a bit bigger of a screen, so it fits a little bit bigger content in. Um, I, think the, I think the reds are truer on uh, the Kobo arc, if you look here, than it is here. It's a little bit washed out just by a touch. Although the uh, on the flip side, the Apple is displaying far more comic. So that's just because it's an inch bigger. Yeah. Same kind of thing going on. Full page, panel by panel. There's no differences between the uh, page turn, uh, panel to turn speeds, as it were. Pinching and zooming is fairly fluid. Yeah. I kind of miss that infinite zoom that the Microsoft Surface had, but. Uh, that was awesome. <laughs> no, they're, they're both displaying the comic very well. Um, they're both really high resolution, although the Kobo Arc looks to be just a little bit clearer in terms of the colors and just the pixelation. Yeah, we'll obviously let the users make up their own mind what they think looks better and maybe why. So the next thing that we're going to look at is magazines, because obviously one of the big reasons to get these sort of tablets is for the full color multimedia experience. So we have Rolling Stones, Rolling Stone uh, brought up on this, and we'll just do a free preview here so we can get the same magazine going. And uh, you will notice that Daniel Craig's head is much larger on the iPad because of the screen size difference. But in terms of color, you guys can make a decision there. Check it out, look at the hues, look at the colors that are coming through, and see which one better suits your needs for 
reading a magazine. Yeah, tests like this aren't just an indication on how well these handle magazines, but also how text looks, how pitch the same pictures look side by side, different environments, different people. So whether you're looking at pictures on the internet, whether you're looking at high resolution wallpapers, these are adequate tests to be able to determine uh, the merits of both of these devices. So that's mainly why you know we're showing at this, but of course at Goody Reader, we're more concerned with reading on these devices than we are playing Angry Birds or... Right. Okay, so that's uh, the magazine experience uh, there. Finally, you could see for yourself that with Google Play, there is a wide variety of apps that are available versus um, the Apple App Store. And unlike uh, its competitors, the Nook HD and the Kindle Fire HD, uh, you do. This is Google uh, certified, so you can download apps onto here from alternative app stores, Google Play, and uh, any other APK you might have. Yeah. Whereas other competing Android tablets, especially the ones geared towards reading, like the Nook HD or the Amazon Kindle Fire, you're pretty well locked into those specific ecosystems to be able to download and install apps. Although the Kindle Fire HD does allow you to install your own apps there's a bit of a workaround whereas all Barnes and Noble tablets restrict you completely to download and install your own apps so obviously with the Apple iPad you have access to more uh, first party releases so more apps are released on iOS first than Android uh, it's simply because of piracy you know you only have to Google insert game or app name here and APK and you'll be presented with thousands of pirate sites yeah, doing it exactly. so you know, it's if you're a developer looking to make money, you're publishing pretty well on iOS in order to generate revenue. So you're seeing more big name studios like EA, um, you know, Telltale Games always releasing things first, like on the iPad. And especially because something once something's made for an iPhone, iPhone, t uh, iPod Touch, or an iPad, you don't have to make it for. Um, so many different types of screen sizes like Android's on everything from a 3 inch screen all the way up to an 11 inch screen so there's so many different types of hardware uh, devices you're you're trying to develop for whereas Apple you just kind of develop it for one or two different formats and you're done so totally so now that we've like looked at a lot of things here what are your thoughts um, I've never been a fan of Apple uh, I will admit the Apple iPad Mini is very nice to hold. It's very thin. It has a huge screen. It's very responsive, very quick. Lots of apps on the Apple Store, but I just really like Android. I like what um, I like the flexibility of Android. Uh, I like the stereo speakers on the front of this device. I think it's a huge, huge uh, advantage over rear-facing speakers, like most devices are. Um, uh, I mean, uh, I'm a little bit biased. I like Android a lot. I'm pretty sure we're going to have a little bit of a discrep uh, differences here between me and Mike. But um, overall, I'd have to say the Kobo Arc is just really winning it for me. The one thing I don't like about the Mini is how small a lot of things are. If you look at the text in like the navigation banner here, it's tiny. It is. For such a big screen. It, and that's surprisingly small. And that's almost the same with most facets of it. I mean, I've used the iPad 1, 2, 3, and we're getting the 4 in our gadget lab soon. And the text is normally big. This seems like iOS 6 for the iPad scrunched up into a 7.9 inch screen. So by default, this text is unreadable. Yeah. You do have to pinch and zoom, whereas this, it's a little bit more readable but not by much where but with the iPad you're used to you open up a web page everything's instantly readable with the mini it's not like that right uh, most of the main elements uh, even like in the setting screens it does look a little condensed yeah look how small that is compared to like what we've seen in the iPad reviews it's it's tiny and I have really good eyes myself <laughs> so it, it's not that big of a deal but um, yeah I mean I do like the iPad, but I don't like the iPad Mini. Uh, I find that 
it's just weird screen dimensions and no really apps are customized to it and you only have to google for iPad mini text small and you'll see millions of forums with millions of user comments all complaining about the same thing how iOS is not optimized for this sort of screen which is why Apple's in development for a sequel to the iPad mini already that they're going to re announce next year. Suffice to say I love the Arc and I, I think that the Arc is a better bang for your buck at the price point than the Apple iPad mini is at this point in its life. With access to Google Play and um, with core services that are devoted towards reading, uh, the Kobo Arc is a reader's reader. So if you're buying a tablet to primarily read comic books, magazines, newspapers, and a ton of other type of literary content, that's what the Kobo Arc was designed for. Uh, Apple iPad mini is... It, books are like an afterthought just like a lot of other things are the, the priority is apps and games so I mean if you're obsessed with like having the latest and greatest apps and games maybe you want to pay double or more for an Apple iPad mini over the Kobo Arc but I would probably recommend the Kobo Arc it's more flexible it's a little bit more open and for a goodie reader review on it I would probably say it gives you a better overall reading experience right. so of course we'll let the users make up their own minds uh, what do you like better the mini or the Kobo Arc tell us the reasons why youtube.com slash goodie reader is the channel name and goodie slash blog is the latest news previews interviews and everything else on the digital publishing ebook and e-reader industry for a review of the Apple iPad Mini and the Kobo Arc. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.